Hello VC community, time for another video um, about recent needle drops. But what I've been listening to yesterday and today in the morning was rather eclectic just by the look of this little stack. So um, let's have a look. First of all, the Bible itself, music for airports by Brian Eno. Heard it about a thousand times probably, seems not to be enough still. So um, actually, um, I mean, most of the time I would listen to this on CD. I was just a little bit curious how the, how the vinyl sounds because I haven't heard it for ages um, on a turntable. Yeah, just to find out that it was quite, uh, quite noisy. So uh, I've been washing this. Uh, cleaning uh, this record. This is of course the one that comes with the famous ambient manifesto. The deciding moment for the future of music. Well, at least for some people, people like me. Yeah, so um, I really don't need to say anything about this. You cannot be, I mean, you cannot be, uh, you cannot be an ambient fan without having this album. I just could not conceive this possibility. <laughs> yeah, complete sound change. Um, Billy Cobham and his Inner Conflicts album. Now, uh, this is a late 70s album by Billy Cobham, of course, jazz fusion, but heavily mixed with. Uh, well, well, it's interesting because um, the first track, Inner Conflicts, is. Uh, it's a little bit different than the rest. It is an interesting mixture of uh, Cobham's jazz drumming combined with very aggressive synthesizer programming. So um, it's an interesting track that takes 10 minutes where Cobham is basically drumming against this wall of keyboard sounds and of synthy sounds. Um, and it Again, it tells you a lot about the, the attitude of the 70s that in the process of making of such an album you would take the least accessible song, the least accessible track and put it at the beginning of the album. Because the rest of the album is uh, much more um, in the vein of uh, well, Latin and African drumming. There's a lot of percussions on it and it has a very strong funk sensibility. It's very funky records in parts. Especially tricks like Arroyo or El Barrio um, are very funky. The other thing I heard is here Hold Me by Sheila E, a 12 inch maxi single. Now um, what do these two records have in common? Well believe it or not Sheila E is playing on this record. <laughs> um, playing percussions on at least three tracks. Well, that's interesting. I'm not making this up. <laughs> it's true. So yeah, I like this one. Um, of course, um, it has an interesting B-side, The World is High, which is a rather progressive uh, pop song. And I don't mean progressive in the sense of progressive rock, but progressive in the sense of uh, being a sonically thought-provoking, let's put it that way. Also coming from this sort of a Prince environment is known for interesting b-sides and singles, right? I mean, it's, you can say that about a lot of uh, Prince material. Those are the people when it, where it's interesting to have a good listen to the b-side as well, because it's usually something very sort of left field or experimental or simply crazy. Oh, next one. Something completely different. Time and a Word by Yes, the second album of Yes. Here with the beautiful original cover designed by Lauren Sackman, the famous photographer. Was not appreciated in the USA, so this album came out in America with the very boring uh, sleeve that also included Steve Howe on the photograph who is not on this album who came like 
five months later to the band. This is still uh, Peter Banks uh, recording on guitar. And yeah, always like this album. It's a wonderful uh, Yes album that sounds very different than all the music that came later. And uh, it's probably the only Yes album that has a certain certain melancholic jazzy atmosphere. Especially um, a track like, like uh, Every Days, which is a cover version of a song by Stephen Stills. Um, yeah, that's very, very, uh, that's the kind of music you can put in your car when you're driving at night through a city. So, time and a word, but yes, very interesting. Okay, I was listening to Welcome to the Pleasure Dome by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Now, um, I'm usually interested in almost, almost, not exclusively, but almost everything that Trevor Horn is producing or had produced in the 80s. So, um, this is a classic, a classic Trevor Horn production. And... Uh, great famous debut album that came as a double album um, with uh, by now already an iconic uh, cover design and it was followed by Frankie Goes to Hollywood's second album Liverpool of course which uh, is again uh, produced by Trevor Horn uh, which sounds a bit different there is a little bit of different uh, intention behind this album I mean, the thing is, for example, here on on the debut album, Trevor Horn himself played a lot of stuff on this, mostly bass guitar, and uh, and there were a lot of hired hands to put it all together. And here uh, there was much more uh, his uh, his suggestion and his intention to uh, let the musicians express themselves a little more and uh, do their stuff on their own, whatever that means. Um, it's a nice inner sleeve here. Looks like this photograph. Yeah, I like the cover design. I mean, if you look closer, it looks a little bit sloppy. But uh, if you look at it from distance, it's somehow stylish and uh, very much in sync with the 80s. And those were the only two albums made by Frankie Goes to Hollywood, which means this is another candidate for an easy access to a complete uh, album uh, collection of a band. <laughs> and finally, White City, a novel by Pete Townsend. One of his 80s uh, solo albums, or post The Who albums. Uh, and uh, this is a good record. I mean, it has uh, some songs that uh, were quite well known in the 80s, like uh, uh, face to face, give blood. There is uh, some playing by David Gilmore on it, and uh, a lot of playing by, um, for example, um, well, John Rabbit Bundrick or Simon Phillips and Pino Palladino. But uh, I think you know this album. I just wanted to listen to it again after quite a while, and so I did. And before I sign off, um, I have listened to the CD. That's something you would not find on vinyl. It's called um, Encuentro, and it is uh, by a band con called Amalgama. Um, I think Amalgama changed their name a couple of years ago because there was another band with the same name, I think. Now, I always like this album, it's very interesting. Because Amalgama is, of course, a flamenco nuevo band, so they played sort of a uh, late 20th century new flamenco style. But this is completely recorded together with the Karnataka College of Percussion, which is a percussive uh, group from India, from Karnataka. Um, it's a nice, nice digi pack here. Nice pictures. And we'll see some live situations. But um, if you are inside the flamenco scene, then you know that the, the mixture or the amalgamation of Spanish traditional music and Indian music actually goes pretty well together. 
And this album has an excellent sound. The music they are playing is very cool, very technical, very uh, fast, uh, very complex rhythms. And these guys know what they are doing. So um, it's one of the great examples of uh, sort of a musical amalgamation. Encuentro by Amalgama. So that's it for now. Have a good day and see you next time. Bye bye.